I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they can be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. So why were you running? I had to get somewhere before it closed. Okay, <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. Um, so I ran like two city blocks in Vancouver. I mean, I, I guess am. that's a thing you can do. I just don't like seeing people run in public. I, I'm used to, unless they're wearing like running clothes, then you're like, okay, safe. I, I am going to say I was run past by several people during my travels, and it yeah. scared me every single time. <laughs> that's appropriate. <coughs> that's the appropriate reaction, just seeing someone running in the wild. Yeah, I mean, I had a GDC shirt on, so I guess yeah. I was less creepy, but yeah, no, I'm probably... In re- in retrospect, seeing me run down a road is probably nightmarish. Seeing me run down the road is probably nightmarish. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Mostly because it'll be like a block and I'll just go... <laughs> just start wheezing, catch my breath, and start running another block. Hey, man, you okay? Do you, do you need help or something? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> like, that's exactly what it would be like. And then you just start walk. The person just starts walking behind you. Yeah, like I go for walks and stuff, and I end with a jog because I know I can't start with the jog because you will die. Yeah, because I'll just I'll be dead. I'll just I, die. I, I get that. I understand that feel. Yeah. Oh, I actually did that last night, and um, oh boy, there's the park. There's a park near my house, and they were showing Frankenstein just on a projector. Hmm. Because I, I do it at night, so it's like probably nine nine thirty when I went out. Which park? Uh, Laughrin Park. Okay. Yeah. But I was like, man, there's cars there. There's never cars there. It's usually just, like, people playing basketball. And then they had, uh, they were showing Frankenstein just on a big projector. Which version of Frankenstein? Uh, I forget. I think it, did Laurel and Hardy have a Frankenstein? Was it black and white? Yeah. But that, that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't have to be all to be black and white. Well, no, I'm only saying was it black and white because then that probably makes it a universal monster. Yeah, uh, I don't, uh, well, Frankenstein's universal. Well, yeah, but Frankenstein's also been in public domain since movies were a thing. Yeah. So. So I'm, I'm looking for their, uh, their, they don't put stuff anywhere. They don't have like an events page. Um, I'm trying to see if they have it on their f- Facebook, but I don't, I don't, they were just showing Frankenstein at the park. That's nice. Yeah. Um, so wait, so what were you running to in can in the can, oh, Canada times? Just a shop. Just, just a, a shop? shop. Yeah. Okay. It was late. Turns out Vancouver closes real early. What, what time is early? What time does Vancouver close? 6.37. That's a little bit ridiculous. I mean, there's a few shops that stay open until 9, but most of it closes at 6.30 or 7. Well, I guess, like, so Uptown, they close, like, in three stages. There's shops that close at, in thir- a third of it shuts down at 4. Mm-hmm. The other third shuts down at, like, 6.30. And then everything else shuts down at 4 a.m. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. It was It was weird. Like, most of the shopping stores shut down, like, wicked early. Yeah. So... I decided to run to make it in time to buy some chach- last-minute chachis. Yeah. Nice. Um, how was yeah. GDC? Was I didn't dope? go to GDC. That was oh. years ago. Oh, how? <laughs> then what were you doing up there? I forgot already. I-, I went to... I went on vacation for the first time in, like, what, four or five years? Damn. Okay. Was it nice? Yeah. It was nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, nice, dude. Vancouver was a little different than what i was expecting it was nice okay. it's just um i wasn't expecting there to be so much of a drug problem in vancouver <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that stuff's sort of everywhere no it is it's just i wasn't expecting it to be 
yeah. so much. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Alyssa's saying it was every street, every corner. Yeah, um, that sounds... Well, it's a city, right? Yeah. Well, the thing is, it turns out, I forgot about this, in... Uh, in New York, I forgot that the NYPD kind of does like crackdowns on uh, homelessness and stuff like that. Yeah. So I don't think they do like crackdowns in. Um, oh, in Vancouver. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was rare to see a cop. Yeah. So. There. Oh, by the way, I don't think we actually announced this in, in uh, unless we did two episodes ago. But we were both sort of on vacation at the same time, so that's why you got that uh, SCP. I like. I dug that. By the way, that SCP. It was the first SCP. I know. Yeah, I'm, I, I, figured, I still enjoy it. That's fair. <laughs> I, I figured I'd upload that instead of John Sounds because John Sound was thirty seconds or so. Oh yeah. Um, but I did make it publicly available on Patreon, yeah. and Clay already said he wanted to make my what noise into a <laughs> uh, a text message, which, yeah, that's, sure. Yeah, go for it. That sounds sure. appropriate. And uh, it was the Abbott and Costello version of Frankenstein. I just found it. What? Yeah, it that's was... such a random version. Yeah, it was fantastic. I just sent it to you in the in the thing. Abbott yeah. and Costello meet Frankenstein. Yeah. Is that the name of it? Yeah, it was fantastic. I didn't watch it. What I saw when I was walking past looked pretty good. Oh, my God. It was black and white. Second. It was fantastic. They had meet the invisible man, meet the mummy. Yeah. Did they just meet all of the, all universal the universal monsters? Maybe. It's entirely possible. Uh, It was produced by <laughs> Universal Pictures. Yeah. So, yeah, they probably did. Yeah. This picture is amazing. The cover? Yeah. Yeah. It, and you know what the worst part is? It had... So... In this movie, yeah. Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. uh, it's with the Wolfman, Lon Chaney, Dracula, yeah. played by Bell Lugosi. <laughs> and the monster played by Glenn Strange. So it's just literally the Universal Monsters. Yeah. Plus Abbott and Costello. Yeah. <laughs> the crossover that I didn't know I needed in my life. Yeah. But it's always been there. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to know something really wild? What's that? This movie was made in 1948. Oh, okay. It had a budget of $760,000. Okay. Guess what its box office was? Oh, I want to say two bills. It is two million dollars. Is that's my guess? Close, but it was three point two million dollars. Oh, in that's 19, a good game. Nineteen forty-eight money. Yeah. Holy cow. That's holy cow. Lord. Yeah. I guess Abbott and Costello were popular, and the Universal Monsters were popular. Oh yeah, no, they were very big. Yeah. Yeah. This this movie looks unreal. It it seemed very interesting. It was black and white. Huh. Yeah. Oh jeez. <laughs> I'm I'm still so wiped though. I Are you? I didn't get jet lag coming out. Yeah. But when I came back, like I was wide awake. Yeah. And I got home. I was watching some Let's Plays on YouTube because mm -hmm. I missed a lot of them because I was gone for a week. Yeah. And then I woke up and it was like two, an hour, hour and a half later. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> so, yeah. I also wanted to murder someone. Oh, and fun. That's always fun. Yeah. they uh, We were we had to make a connection. Yeah. And somebody was taking up the entire sky bridge oh. with two... Two suitcases. Yeah. But. That sucks. Although, that being said, I saw you went to the Renaissance Fair. I did go to the Renaissance Fair. It was a good time. There was the first time I went explicitly for day drinking, and then we also stayed the night at a, a residence in Marriott in uh, New Jersey. Nice. Yeah. It was dope. Showed up, went in, found the beer, and then just sort of did that thing where you, where you, you hear something, and you go... Let's explore that. So it'd just be like, show up, get a beer, like, what's that ruckus? Go over. There's the jousting. That was fun. Went up on the hill because I'm tall and I can see, but 
nobody else I was with could see over anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, no, let's just go up on the hill. So we watched down the hill. Uh huh found more beer then we're like what's this commotion over here and there's the whole like robin hood and maiden miriam and all oh that God. uh going on and yeah it's just wander around and explore and so, uh yeah y- you were day drinking does that mean that the elves accosted you in any way or the fairies rather there were no fairies right what there were none to be found there were no and fairies? that was of concern right so here's what's up so i went i got a haircut the day before because i was like i need mm-hmm. to get a haircut yeah and then dorm one of my barbers I was like, oh, because he goes every Sunday the entire time that they're open. So he he's going for, like, Barbarian Weekend. He's there every week, weekend. And then, so we were talking about the fairies because I can go with my friend. She's never gone before. And then they, he, something I didn't, they never did this to me because I never tried to take a picture of a fairy. If you pull your phone out, they steal your phone and just take a bunch of selfies. What? Yeah. So, but there were no Somehow fairies, and I was, it was a little bit sense. of a letdown because I was like, I kind of just want there to be a fairy and see how the interaction is gonna go, uh, just because it would be funny. Uh, but that didn't happen. I was like, man, but still, it was a fun time. Yeah. Had uh, right because you and I have gone before. I know yep. the secrets, right? You need to go to the bathroom, take the trail by the entrance that goes past because nobody uses those. There's like eight of them. They're always empty and they're the cleanest. Yeah, those are the best. Those are the best bathrooms in the entire yeah. park. Don't use the bathrooms where there's signs pointing to them. Use the bathrooms that nobody ever uses. So, yep. bam, got that done. Trick number two, don't wait in line ever unless it's for beer. What you do is you get pizza because there's never a line. We walked up and we're just like, two pizzas, please. And just instantly we were handed pizza. For some reason, I never thought of that. Yeah, don't wait for turkey legs or whatever. Get, well, I never uh, wait for turkey legs. I feel like I never enjoy turkey legs, actually. Yeah, like, don't get the popular f- fair food, right? If you're looking around, there's tacos and there's pizza and there's zero people. Like, you can mm-hmm. just walk up and they just hand you food. And it is fantastic. Uh, yeah. Lissa's asking if you want to go back because I guess we're going. When are we going? We're going the weekend of the 13th and bringing Aster again. Oh, dope. There's it's Pirate a... Weekend. Pirate Weekend. Let me, the 13th of September, let me write that down and check my schedule. Okay. Because I actually have left, I still have some extra tickets. Because I bought extra tickets and gave some out too to, I saw a big family. So I just uh, gave them some free tickets because I was like, you have five kids. I feel like you could use a couple tickets. Because I, you know, so... <laughs> So I think I've got two. I think I've still got two more tickets for this year that I didn't use. All right, sounds good. Yeah. So it's the weekend of the thirteen. I'm just gonna write down the number thirteen and hope I don't forget what that is. You will. There's. I will. Yeah. No, I'll probably I'll, need I'll, to be. I'll, I'll bug you again. Yeah. Don't worry. Okay. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and then <clears throat> so we did that. We well, we went to the hotel, got into our outfits, Ubered over. Did the whole rent fair thing. That was a, mm-hmm. It was a whole bunch of fun. And then um, we Ubered back, and we were like, the hotel doesn't have a bar. Because right? it was explicitly a weekend for, like, we're going to spend the full day at the fair, yeah. stay at the hotel, and just do – because you never get to just, like, do day drinking stuff. They didn't have a bar. But I had, <clears throat> like, a nice king suite on the corner. Yeah. And out the window was a big fire pit. So I was like, let's go make some friends. So then it was this really nice um, uh, family from Dominica, and they were yeah. just having, I guess it's someone's birthday the next day, but they yeah. they were like, only two of them spoke English, but that doesn't matter. They had good music, and like we communicated, had fun, good chit-chat and all that. Delicious mm-hmm. chicken. They had delicious chicken. Um, they had, I don't know what they had, but it was also delicious. Mm-hmm. It was just fun time hanging out. There's also just some uh, family now because, like, they were, like, taking pictures in front of, like, the pool and doing all this other stuff at night and uh, taking pictures and posing. They're like, oh, they waved us over. Like, no, you guys getting all these pictures. So now there's just going to be just some random family where they're like, oh, do you remember when you had your birthday here? And they're scrolling through pictures. They'll just be like, who, who are these people? This? Yeah. Who? Who? We don't know who these people are. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. It was good. Their food was so good, though, that we were leaving the next day. 
and mm-hmm. <clears throat> she was like, I kind of want more Dominican food. And I was like, that's fine. I mean, I don't know where they are. And she goes, no, I know a place in Poughkeepsie. So we didn't go back home. We drove to Poughkeepsie to get Nelly's, uh, oh my God. a Dominican restaurant, and then went back home. I mean, Poughkeepsie's kind of on the way. It's sort of. I mean, it's like it, it, just it, the next exit, I think. Yeah, it's it's yeah. one of those things where it's like you get off in uh, you get off at uh, uh, New Paltz, and it's like just a yeah. skip and a hop. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, it was a good time. I spent not as much. I spent. It's the least I've ever spent when I've been there. I think. Oh really? Yeah, because cool. I usually buy like I bought a sword one year. And oh, then yeah, usually buy, like, that. some other stuff. So it was literally just the ticket price and then, like, a few beers. And then we also found, like, instead of getting the $12 Bud Light, we get the $8 IPA. So it's cheaper. Huh. And I like IPAs. They taste better. And they're, like, twice as strong. So I saw something. Yeah? I'm I'm going to attack you a little bit on this. What? Um... On Twitter this morning, I saw someone say, uh, IPAs are the middle-aged man's pumpkin spice. No, well, I mean, that's not wrong, probably. <laughs> I'm not even mad. <laughs> I just love IPAs. That's fair. I'm picky about them. Like, they, they got to taste right, but if it's like yeah. Ithaca Flower Power or if it's like Lagunitas or something, like, they're fantastic. It's oh, just good man. stuff. See... It's funny because I I work with a lot of people mm. who drink IPAs. Yeah. So even though I don't drink, I actually kind of understand what you're talking about. Yeah, they're just there's fine. Like I like it's like coffee. Like there's Is people it? have preferences. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was about to say. I'm like, mm. no, explicitly it's not. There's other beer that's like coffee that like in taste. I don't yeah. like that beer. I like the IPAs, but my mouth is all fucked up. So, like, I need things that taste strong. All right. So, by that, I mean, <clears throat> okay. I put very hot hot sauce on food frequently. Yep. I drink my coffee black. Mm-hmm. I drink uh, Isla uh, whiskeys, scotch, which is, like, the really, really, like, most, like, people, you either like it or it's, like, it's like you're being punched in the mouth with, like, salt <laughs> and smoke and stuff like that. I okay. like really big, bold flavors. That's just yeah. how I eat food. So the IPA is the big, bold flavor of beer. Everything else to me is just like weird water. And then IPA is, okay, it's got some good flavor to it. I need that strong, like I'm having some black coffee right now from Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, I can't do Dunkin' Donuts coffee. It tears my stomach apart. It's very close to my house. My mom just came by and dropped it off for me, so yay. Which... Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, okay. Yep, yep, yep. The one across from the McDonald's. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. It took me a second. Mm -hmm. It took me a second. Yeah. So I'm actively trying to decide, because I've got a few uh, copies written up, so I'm trying to decide which one I want to do. I I am so jealous of you. I'm so far behind. Like... I don't know how... Because you you were like, I know what I'm doing next. And I was like, man, you don't have it written yet? And I know the next one, I'm uh, uh, the third, so I'll have three done eventually. So the reason I don't have my next one written up yet yeah. is because I had to prep for a week long vacation. Oh, is a week long? Yeah, I didn't know that. Holy crap, dude! Yeah, that's why I, I want to go have it on written. a long vacation somewhere. Yeah, I just used up so much of my personal time, and winter's coming, so uh, yeah. that'll be next year. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I, yeah, I ended up using like because I had to, well, the thing is, I had to spend so much time like prepping and making sure all like. I was on the phone for an hour dealing with American Airlines, which, pro tip, don't use American Airlines. No. Yeah, it was bad. So, um, as a result, I totally lost all my free time for writing up the episode, which is, it is Spring Heel Jack Part 2. That is coming next week, hopefully. Knock on wood. <laughs> But, I mean, while I was away, I found more ideas for new episodes, so that was cool. Yeah. That's... But. I'm jealous of that, because I'm legitimately out, because the next one that I know I'm going to do is one where you're like, hey, you should probably do this one. Yeah. I was like, oh, thank you. I needed ideas. <laughs> There's yeah. always the issue with American Airlines, because I just booked a flight for... <clears throat> my friend just got back from uh, Vegas, and then her friend just flew out yeah. from 
California to here, and then mm-hmm. she we're all going to different barbecues and stuff over this weekend. But that was a source of anxiety for her, so I was like, I'll book it. So I felt like I started by looking at what model airplanes different uh were because I was like, listen. If anybody's flying, you're not getting on these old rickety, get on whatever's the newest. There's no new stuff for, like, commercial flights anymore anyways. But it's no. still, like, A327, that's the newest one. And then I found out who, like, where that's going at us. So it was uh, JetBlue at a JFK <laughs> on an A327. But that was legit. Just, I went to their website, and it was just, like, bink, bink, direct flight, no layovers. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I booked through Priceline. Um, oh, you want third party? Yeah, and then when what happened was American Airlines like got rid of our flight and moved us the day before, so I had to sit on the phone for an hour fixing everything. That sucks, dude. Yeah, yeah. So never again. Never again Priceline, never again American Airlines for me. Shoot, okay. Yeah. So, I guess... Welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and the legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we'll take him on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and the thing that definitely lives under your bed. I just had coffee. I'm Brandon. I- I'm John. And if you want to hear how that actually goes, <clears throat> listen to the odd-numbered episodes. Yeah. Yes, or listen yeah, to the music. Or listen 51? to the episode at, like... 0.5 speed. You should probably hear that normally. Yeah. Well, oh, here's what's up, right? Because we had the off week episode. So now, mm-hmm. right, we're closing out the end of the year by swapping evens and odds. So it'll be like season one, I had all the odds. Off week was episode 49. This will be episode 50. No, unless well, we want to change stuff up, because I know there's like stuff we want to well, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We're going to we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that on episode 52. Okay. We got we got some well you and I will talk about it a separate time but yeah. <laughs> you guys are going to hear on episode 52. Yeah. Oh no, I'm trying to figure out like we've got episode 50 this one 51 52 left. Yeah. But if I drop 50 Well, this is actually 51, episode Oh no, then never mind. This no, the order's fine. Never mind. This I'm is just 49. Looking at the this is episode 49 right now, technically. 49 was the Oh, I got you. Yeah. Because we're not going to count the off week as like a legit... I got it's you. It's not a canonical episode. Yeah. No, I'm I'm watching the uh, yeah. spreadsheet. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call the off week 49.48.5. That's fair. I think that's probably the best way of putting it. And then I'll just renumber the last couple things. Perfect. All right. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't considering it canonically an episode just because it was like... It was me... It was me at... 6 a.m. West Coast time in a Victoria hotel room being like, <laughs> do this. And then I fell back asleep. I literally post. <laughs> I did all of that from yeah. my phone and then fell right back asleep immediately oh, afterwards. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, also, I'm just going to leave a long intro because why not? We're just talking. Um, yeah, we mi- well, we missed. You'll be a used week. to it by now. Yeah, we missed a week. People will be used to us just yapping by now. Uh, this week's creature is I'm on the wrong one already. All right, close that one so I can't read the wrong script. Uh, this week's creature is humanoid in appearance. Mm-hmm. It lives in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. It has a relatively obscure first sighting date from around like the 1960s, and it's still seen today. So we've got Kentucky. We've got about the 60s. It's pretty obscure, still seen. Um, Kentucky, yeah, Kentucky cryptid. Um, man, there's jokes I can make, but I think we do have listeners in Kentucky, and I don't want to make them jokes. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably some kind of. Is it? How much hair does it have? It has. I would call it pretty hairy. Okay. It. I'd say less than a Bigfoot hairy. Okay. I'll throw that one out for you right now. It's not a Bigfoot. Not a Bigfoot. Okay. Uh, is it Carl from down the block in uh, downtown Kentucky? Where, whatever city. It, every city, downtown Kentucky, there's a Carl. There, there's a Carl? No, every it's not. city in downtown Kentucky, every downtown in every city of Kentucky, there's a Carl. There's, it's, it might be, it, you know what, it is Carl. 
Okay, good. This I week's got script it. is Carl. He works in IT. Does he now? Yes. Hmm. See, yeah. guys who work in IT don't like to go outside typically. No. So well, that's why he's only seen now, at night, so the sun doesn't burn you. his his yeah, his this, his, this. Uh, his mother of pearl skin. Mother of pearl skin. I mean, I kind alabaster. Of that. That's what I was trying to think of. Alabaster. I was, yeah, I was, I was about time. to say. I'm like mother of pearl. Well, the, here's I. I couldn't think of the word alabaster, Fair. and it was like mother of pearl. And then I I thought uh, abalone, and then mm-hmm. abalone, and then I was like, no, it's not abalone. But then I was like, well, that's mother of pearl. And then I had this weird chain of thought in my head. Alabaster is the word, though. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so who is to- it? Today we're talking about the public monster man. Oh shoot. Yeah. I haven't thought about the Popelik monster in, uh, well, since probably since we started, you know what? You know what? I tried what? to do an episode about the Popelik monster. Oh, did you? I did. Did you watch the video? The movie? No, I did not watch the movie. Oh my God. You need to watch the Popelik monster movie. I read about the movie. People it's... weren't happy about it. No? No. The community was a little bit outraged about it. Really? Yeah. Well, because it's sort of there, there's stuff in there where they imply that if the tra- you can cross the bridge because, like in the movie, I guess someone hangs from the bridge. Yeah. And they like get they survive, but that's just a thing that doesn't happen. I might go into it. I don't remember. I wrote this one weeks ago. So I this is we're both learning about this at the same time. Oh, all right. Well, because that's gonna that, be fun. That's how my copies have been for the last like probably eight or ten episodes because i'd write lord i'd i'd write like three and then we'd record every other week so by the time i got to the last one it'd be like six weeks since i wrote something (laughs) and i'd be like i don't remember any of this this is great (sighs) i got so (laughs) many copies that are in progress right now that are like literally just sources oh yeah yeah the uh oh so the public monster has the grotesquely deformed body of a man with fur-covered goat legs. And al- oh, alabaster. I said it right there even. I even know. An alabaster face with an a- aquiline. I assume that means pig nose or goat nose, right? Is I that think goats? It would be, I think it would be goat because it's a goat yeah. man. An aquiline nose. Wide set uh, eyes. Eagle beak. Sh- sh- like no eagle, eagle beak. beak. What? Wide set yeah. eyes. Sharp horns protruding from his forehead and long greasy hair matching the fur on his legs. Other descriptions have him looking more like a sheep, with sheep man uh, being the name given to this beast. And here's a fun fact. If you just try to look up pictures of the uh, Pope Lick monster, it is mostly screenshots from the movie Black Sheep, but not the uh, Chris Farley movie. The movie from uh, the people that did the Lord of the Rings uh, stuff, where they have all the special effects and the wire sheep. I love that movie. It's so good. I Yes. You know... We should probably one of these days, um, we should probably one of these days like record for the Patreon stuff like a, uh, like a what's the word it is a riff track style thing watching yeah. Black Sheep at this point. Oh yeah, because we've referenced it so many times in the show. Yes, that's ah uh, yeah, it's such a good movie. Did you just send me a picture of a cat? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was it, when I searched Aquiline, that was what popped up. Oh, okay, accurate, yeah. perfect. Yeah. So that's that's a thing. <sighs> <laughs> the uh, so the creature is said to be able to mimic familiar voices, luring people up onto the train tracks, and if all else fails, he dispatches the victim with the rusty, blood-stained axe. He is also said to have the power to hypnotize people. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, he's about right. I pictured him sort of like, um, like, uh, Alakazam, sort of just like swing lift, do do do. You're trying to hypnotize people that way. Uh, but specifically, he gets people to throw themselves off off the trussle located a few hundred yards off Taylorsville Road, near where Popelik goes into the Floyd Park. Mm-hmm. The trestle itself was built in the 1800s, and it stands about 90 feet above Popelik and spans a total distance of 772 feet over fields and small trees. Uh, the trestle itself doesn't have any railings or small outlets to hide from the trains uh, before the nine-story drop. Which doesn't and, surprise me, considering it was made in the uh, 1800s. And, oh, yeah, it's a train trestle. Yeah, and, and safety... Well, well, but even modern train trestles still have, like... 
like CYA situations yeah. for you. I'm trying to recall. I don't think did the Trestle and Rosendale before they like redid it. No, they didn't have railings either. No, it did not. That thing no. was a nightmare. Because we used but, to cross that all the time. Yeah, people would cross it all the time. I wouldn't. Oh, I did. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't because I was scared of it. Uh, yeah. Which, let's be real, I think there's a healthy amount of fear that can be had at that thing. Oh, yeah. Well, it was like a train trestle that's going... It's is that That's definitely higher than 90 feet before you hit just road and like an almost empty riverbed. And yeah. people just cross that all the time. Like, there's gaps, and you'd have to make sure that the wood you're walking on wasn't rickety. Now mm-hmm. that I think back on it, that's probably a bad idea that everybody, did, like, just all it, the time people it were was crossing a, it. It was a terrible idea. There's a reason why they redid it. It was because it was yeah. like, well, I guess people are going to just keep doing this anyways. We might as well make it not a freaking death machine. Yeah. I mean, I bet you people, I bet you there's a fair number of people who died trying to cross that, especially drunk people. You know, I'm trying to remember. I don't remember anyone ever falling off that. I don't remember anyone falling off that either, but it, ha- it there's no way that it didn't happen. Like, you're saying that, and I agree, like, it can't not have happened, but at the same time, I feel like no, I, I totally I'm the, never heard anything about that. As, as I was saying that, I'm trying to remember someone falling. I don't remember anyone falling, yeah. but at the same time, like, there's no way. Maybe Rosendale is just full of functioning alcoholics and just nobody. Well, let's, Brandon... Rosendale is definitely full of functioning yeah. alcoholics. Yeah. Like. <laughs> There's. Oh, so I was at um, a bar yesterday. This is going to be a long rambling one, but I don't care. Um, I was at uh, Snappers mm-hmm. yesterday just hanging out and talking to people. And some people showed up. And there was like, I don't want to call it a secret, but there was like a secret Grateful Dead concert. Not with the actual band, but like a tribute like band. A tribute band? Okay just behind someone's house in Rosendale. But it was apparently big because people came up and they're talking and they're like, oh, do you remember this guy? And they're doing impressions of other people. And I guess also like Hell's Angels showed up and were just super chill because they just also like the Grateful Dead. Well, yeah, I I figured that much. Yeah, I just can't. Like, it's so... Because Rosendale, I picture like, it was hippie type people that I was talking to. Yeah, yeah, Well, that's Rosendale. Yeah, but then they're like, oh, yeah. And then the Hell's Angels came by and they were pretty cool and they were just hanging out. I was like, that's, I could, I didn't, that's not something I would have expected. I mean, from what I've heard, like, Hell's Angels aren't terrible. Although they are bad, too. I, I don't know. Yeah. They're, they're one of those things where it's like, I've heard mixed things about them. Yeah. Which I'm saying, I'm saying that, and I don't, I don't want anyone to add me on this. I don't know. Do research on yourself. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't. I don't mess with Hell's Angels as a rule. I don't mess with anyone. Who... I, was like, I don't think you mess with anybody as a rule. Yeah, as a rule, I avoid messing with people. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the supposed origins of this beast include a local farmer becoming much too familiar with his goat, a man mm-hmm. who called himself Colonel Beauregard Schl- Sch- uh, Schildnecht. Uh, sure. Although there's no record uh, or evidence that he ever served in any regiment of the armed forces uh, or militia. So I'm just going to call him the Colonel because I can't keep pronouncing that name. So the Colonel was the owner and ringmaster of a traveling circus that performed across the heartland of America uh, and into the Deep South territories beginning in the 1930s. The Colonel's reputation was one of ill repute in the carnival business. He was considered a liar, a cheat, and an all-around charlatan. Uh, his crew of carnies and circus clowns were more of a gang of cutthroats and pirates than a sideshow uh, entertainer. And every time they visited, they left behind a series of unsolved thefts, missing persons, and grisly accidental deaths. So I just want to point out. Yes. If you can point to someone and say, hey, every time this person left, there was a bunch of unsolved se- thefts, uh, there were a bunch of missing persons, and there were a bunch of accidental deaths. I don't, like... On paper, they're unsolved. Yeah, but I think I think it's pretty obvious who did it. Oh yeah, it's like if if you work with someone called Skidmark Steve, and every time like there Skidmark Steve is in a meeting, like nobody sees anything happen, but you don't want to use that chair ever again. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, you, you'd connect some dots. 
there's some dots. There's some yeah. dots being connected here. Oh, yeah. Now, whether or not they're, like, officially connected, that's another story, but there's dots. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and someone might not draw the line, but they're mm-hmm. there. There, they are there, A, and they don't come out easy. No, especially not if Skidmark Steve is around. He gets no. up in there. Oh, yeah. The uh, So one thunderously stormy night, while stopped in a small town near Beltsville, Maryland, the circus's bearded lady, Madame uh, Bristles, discovered an abandoned infant uh, left in a hay-filled uh, crate outside her tent. The child was severely malformed, with stubs protruding from its forehead. Uh, and it had misshapen legs that ended in what looked more like cloven hooves than human feet. She took the poor creature and gave it food and shelter. I don't believe uh, this story. There's, I mean, I would be very credulous if I was you. I don't believe this story. I don't know. Uh, this. <laughs> anytime, anytime a bearded lady shows up in a story. Yeah. Um. Anytime a carny shows up in a story. Oh, yeah. I am suddenly suspicious. suspicious of the story. Yeah. I will say that. This is just one of the several possible origin stories I, I of know they're the Pope Lake Monster. No, I know that they're real. I just, every time it's like a carny story, I always am suspect of it. Sorry. <laughs> I, I will uh, let me let me let me amend that bearded women are real that's not that's not yeah, a weird it's thing a condition. yeah yeah it's a condition it's not a weird thing but carney stories are questionable never trust a carney no that's a fair yeah uh so one look at the twisted abomination the colonel knew that he had struck gold he found the starring attraction for his freak show and it would make him rich beyond his wildest dreams he took the child and raised it in captivity never letting it out uh, of his sight or out of its cage until he could be fully exploited for its grotesque appearance uh the wait, beast yes wait so wouldn't it be fully exploitable from the get-go the get-go yeah you'd like, think like i i think that's like instantly exploitable oh yeah no i've seen sideshow stuff there where they always like they're all like props and stuff but there's still like yeah the like mermaid lady and then like the snake boy and yeah. stuff like that i've seen those yeah i mean if you had something that lo- was like functioning and looked like that y- you'd do it yeah like right off the bat yeah mm-hmm. they're not the be- good people who run People who run freak shows are not necessarily good people. Yeah, well, it all depends on the situation, right? Yeah. You have to look at them as an individuals. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Th- there are different situations, but when 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 this guy is described as being basically really shitty... <laughs> oh, yeah. My, my, uh, my ability to guess whether or not he's treating people well and with respect that they deserve. Mm-hmm. That's a whole nother. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the beast grew in size and strength over the years. It stubs becoming full-sized horns and its temperament as nasty as the treatment given to it by the cruel circus enemies charged with keeping uh, his cap- captors. This guy, now that I think about it, sounds a little bit like the first Hellboy movie. A little bit. Yeah, right? It's kind of like a Hellboy setup. Yeah. Uh, it spent most of its life chained to a wall of a cage inside the circus train, was whipped brutally daily uh, to keep it subdued and submissive, and fed only gruel and leftover scraps from the Midway vendor's grease pits. One fateful night during a thunderstorm as violent as the one, uh, the night of the child's birth, the circus no, train... Wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait. How do they know that that was that? The the child was found in a the child was found in a hay bale. Excuse me. A crate full of hay, yeah, yeah. On like a thunder night. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that it was born that night. Oh yeah, that's you're, true, it, correct. It could have been born like 3 days before. It's possible. Yeah, it's possible. <sighs> okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. I just yeah. got No, no, that's fine. <sighs> that's appropriate for this story. 
Uh, so during a thunderstorm as violent as the one on the night of its birth, the circus train was passing through Fisherville on its way to a performance in Louisville, Kentucky, when a bolt of lightning struck the tracks, causing the train to derail just ahead of the trussle over Pope Lick Creek. The mm-hmm. twist, the twisted wreck uh, probably killed most of the colonel's crew instantly, but not all of them, since body parts were found as far as two miles away from the crash site. So you definitely have a uh, newspaper article about this crash, right? Sure. Okay, just checking. Uh-huh. Want to make sure. Yeah. The goat man took revenge on his captors, which explains why the bodies of the colonel and his staff were never found. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the longest of those stories. The uh, last one is that uh, the be- is an old chemist who became a recluse uh, after his face was horribly burned in an explosion, and uh, another one was just a strange hermit living in an old shack. Those are boring. Yeah, those are boring. That's why they got, like, one sentence, and then it's like, okay, this whole deal with, like, the carnival and all that seems more interesting than, like, it's a hermit. Well, those two are boring, but somehow more believable to me. I wouldn't say somehow. Definitely more believable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the early sightings takes place in the 60s, or maybe the 50s, who knows? It's all poorly written down. But it's by a Boy Scout troop, uh, including a scoutmaster, who were attacked by a monster which screamed and threw rocks at them. Okay, never trust a Boy Scout troop. No, never. As somebody who is in a Boy Scout troop, never trust a Boy Scout troop. They're just throwing rocks at each other the whole time. Oh, are they? (laughs) Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a three-man slingshot was, like, banned from my troop when I was oh, in high school because yeah. it was used so many times, like, improperly. Uh-huh. Yeah. Shoot. Uh, in the mid-1970s, rumors of a satanic cult uh, and demonic rituals began circulating in the same area along Pope Lake Road, and reports of missing dogs, cats, and other domestic animals were suspected to uh, of falling prey to the satanic blood ceremonies. A mysterious farm known as the Four Winds uh, down the street a few miles from the train was suspected of being owned by a group of Satanists who worshipped the public monster as the living embodiment of Baphomet, the goat of Menendez himself. Uh, a mocking image of the lamb of... Uh, I'm, I'm reading bad. I was doing well and now I'm reading bad. It's all good. It's I happening mean, again. It's happening again. It's, it's all right. It's all right. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, so, all right, there's a little bit to unpack in there. First of all, yeah, that's satan. That's basically satanic panic right there. So it is like, um, yeah. Oh, you hydrating? I'm hydrating. Well, I'm actually, uh, apple cidering. Um, Ooh, apples. You know what? Pumpkin is coming out already. Yeah, I know. It's still August at the time of recording. There's already pumpkin like coffee coming out. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, it's it's wild. Um, it's weird to me how much, like, people who are not Satanists know about Baphomet. Oh, yeah. Right? Like... It's the goat guy. Everybody knows him as the goat guy. But it's just so weird to me that it's like, everyone's like, yeah, that's a thing. That's a mm-hmm. thing that we know about. Everyone around here knows about that. Right? Like... Oh, yeah. But it's also just, like, a cool image. Like, if you had no. to pick a deity, it's, like, the coolest-looking deity. It really is. It like really is. Down. Yeah, no. It, it does win. It does win on the coolness factor, for sure. Yeah. And that's all that counts. You're not wrong. Yeah. Gotta be all the coolness. Um, anyway, the uh, Forens Farm was surrounded by a red and black painted fence uh, through the 1980s and into the 1990s with a sign uh, on the front gate warning that trespassers will be persecuted and uh, strange tribal drum beats and chanting were often heard in the woods from behind the farm's barn. Okay, but that's not necessarily Satanism. No, it could just be... Literally, there's... Dr- like, it could be a drum circle. Uh, those it, goddamn drum circles. It could just circles. be a drum circle. You say that sarcastically, but there's... Li- like, because I look up events in the area to see if I want to go anywhere. How many there's drum, drum circles... circles. There's drum circles all the time, especially in Woodstock. Like, if I right now Google, uh, 
No, I'm not even going to do do my no, general you, search. A, you don't a, even a. need to. You don't even need to because I know I know for a fact that there's there's drum circles in Woodstock all the time. There's probably one happening as we record. Let's not let's You're not joking. Words. I think there's one today. There's definitely one today. I'm not joking. I'm being serious. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, I know for a fact that it's happening right now. Like, I'll be at work and Billy will be like, "Hey, you're going to the drum circle?" I'll just be like, "No." <laughs> Like I can practically smell the patchouli from here. Oh God! Because the patchouli's that there to hide the weed smell. I uh, hate you. Don't have to hide that in Woodstock, though. Um, you don't. But or literally anywhere, even in Kingston, because I'll just be walking down the street and nobody's even hiding anything. Well, it's. I think it got decriminalized in in New York State too. So. Oh, it did, but that's before that happens. That's true. That's yeah. true. I mean, really, really, all weed is the whole like charging people for weed is literally just an excuse oh yeah because that's all it is it's yeah. just like a it's like a we need a reason so yeah we're charging you for weed because oh yeah we needed a reason and people are super casual like i don't think they uh it's it's been a while i think since anybody got in trouble for that mm -hmm. um because like i don't do that but like even yesterday when I was just hanging out and talking to people, like mm -hmm. someone just pull just start like getting set up at the bar. Like, and someone's like, what? Can you just Yeah, they just had it on the table because they wanted like a flat surface to set everything down and like like do everything, get ready. And someone was like, Hey, I get that like they're like, I don't have any problems with you doing that, but they're like, Can you just not here? Like just not like, right not here. Not there. Not like, maybe, right there. Yeah, maybe try like outdoors. Like a little chill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, we're like, we get it. It's casual. Nobody's gonna like shit on you or judge you or whatever. But like, just not here. Keep yeah. us not here. Just, just a smidge. Just a smidge yeah. of not. Like what you're doing. Do that literally ten feet to the right. No one will care. It's just yeah. right here. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know. Mm, yeah. Why? Uh, all right. I mean, yeah. for me, that's basically how it would go. It'd be like, uh, mm, dude, mm, ooh, ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it'd be and, like, it'd be like if someone was playing with a yeah. soundboard of me noises. Oh yeah. Oh, and to, and you could probably have guessed, but it was one of the people that came from the Grateful Dead thing. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Wow. Wait, wait. Let me let me get my shocked face on. <laughs> there we go. I did it. Yeah. Yeah. So all the stories surrounding the trestle made it a hot spot for kids to hang out, party, rub bits together, and dare each other to cross the trestle. I mean, it's a trestle, so it's already a hot spot. It doesn't oh, yeah. even need the stories. Like, yeah. Is it a landmark in the woods? Yeah, stuff's going to happen there. Pretty much. Hey, is it something that everyone could say, hey, want to go to the blank? Yeah. Okay, yeah, there's going to be a party there. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. Oh, it costs no money to go there? Yes. <laughs> it costs money, and there's no, like, adults or authority figures. What? No, no one's going to go there. There needs to be yeah. at least... It has to have at least a $20 cover charge, and there yeah. has to be an adult on duty. Yeah. On staff? Whatever. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. So, one sighting in 1975 by 15-year-old uh, Denise... Uh, she was hanging out under the train trestle near Pope Lick Creek. She explained that there was, um, she was a tough love child and sometimes stayed out well past her curfew. She explained that on this evening in particular, they were deep in the woods under the infamous trestle, trestle, uh, okay. and she thinks it might have been uh, a moonlit night. So this story, by the way, is her recalling something from the past. I don't mm -hmm. recall. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't say one of those. This is something that happened like 40 years earlier to, to her. Mm -hmm. um, and because they had no flashlights, uh, like it must have been moonlit because she remembers details clearly. Uh, mm -hmm. Her memory well, is not that great, and uh -huh. she could not add many details that large. Um, to, uh, outside of that, it was a large, dark figure that ran across the path in front of them, uh, perhaps as close as 25 feet. And she said, quote, it was very fast and much bigger than them, uh, and that definitely had two legs and was a shadowy figure. 
She could not recall if it had hair, but added that they all thought it was not a person, and she does not remember hearing or smelling anything. Uh, she added that if it was a person, uh, they expected to see another person following it, um, or they would hear... This is written weirdly. Yeah. They, she just got freaked out. She, they saw something big and shouty run across them, but, got freaked out. Okay, okay. Yeah. So there's like 30 explanations for this. Oh, yeah, there's a billion. And also she's recalling something from the past. And, and yeah. it's it's literally, literally all it is, a dark figure ran across the path. Oh, yeah. Let's it see. literally could have been, like, if it wasn't that many years ago, it could have been someone night jogging. And nowadays, yeah. Although yeah. a weird kind of night jog, but, you know, there are weird people yeah. everywhere. I um, night jog. It could... That's fair. Yeah. It could also just have been a Sasquatch. A Sasquatch? Yeah, a I hate Sasquatch. them Sasquatches. It's a Sasquatch. It's, a it's Sasquatch's squash. drunk cousin. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm thinking of bits in my head, but I can't say any of them. That's fair. <clears throat> there were also several deaths associated with the bridge. The Courier Journal published an article dubbing the bridge the Trestle of Death. <laughs> Perfect sound effect. Uh-huh. Uh, in 1986, David Wayne Bryant tried to cross the trestle. Uh, the trestle is such that you cannot see oncoming locomotives. He leapt off the 90-foot-high bridge and sustained injuries, which he would later pass away from in 1987. Uh, wait, and wait, 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 What was the yes. time frame on that? 86 to 87? Wow, that it, it, sucks. It was a year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in 1987, 17-year-old Jack Baum uh, II also attempted to, tra to traverse the bridge with some friends, and he was struck by the train. Uh, supposedly, Jack's just stopped the car uh, and got out wanting to cross the bridge and his friends did not want to but eventually they all decided to cross uh, his two friends did make it from the bridge um, okay. so that last portion there is that the implica implication is that they're driving past it with no intent and they got hypnotized and this is what the friends are saying uh, into crossing the bridge mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah 17 year old yeah. yeah they got hypnotized across yeah. the bridge Listen, 17, it's there. I'm going to cross that. Oh, yeah. that's. I was literally crossing the train trestle by, like in Rosendale at the same age. Yeah. Uh, actually, no, I would have been younger because I think they might have closed it for a bit when we were 17. I don't know. Yeah, it was closed. Uh, his younger sister later went to the bridge to find the goat man. Uh, she gets onto the tracks and is supposedly struck by an intense feeling of calmness. To this day, she believes that it was the goat man that claimed her brother. Wait. What? Yeah, his sister went back to find the goat man after what happened, and but, she does still believe that was the goat man. But why would it give her intense feeling of calmness? Uh, I think the idea is that the calmness was the goat man causing her to not have anxiety about going onto the tracks. What? Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't I, say this was a story that was going to make sense. This doesn't make any sense, but continue. I, yeah. I mean, like, that's such a roundabout way to compel you to get on the, the trestle. Oh, yeah. Right? It's like, no, you're not worried about it anymore. I'm still not going to do it. Yeah, but you're yeah. not worried about it anymore. Yeah, but I have no reason to do yeah. it. He lures, lures her over by doing impressions. There's like... Hey, it's me, George Clooney. I'm up here. That's Let's the, have fun. That's your George Clooney impression. Yeah, you can't tell us. It's clearly George Clooney. And then I, as soon as you get up to meet George Clooney, you're like, I'm so calm now. And he's like, come a little bit deeper. There's tequila and donuts. Wh what? And that's how he gets you. Okay, maybe I just... Am I, is it weird that I want to have tequila and donuts with George Clooney? That's... It is kind of weird. I won't lie. I mean, or I'll accept Brad Pitt as well. <laughs> That's even weirder, I feel like. <laughs> in uh, in November of 2000, uh, Nic Nicholas Jewell of Mount Washington, at the age of 19, died after falling from the trussel. Mm -hmm. uh, four friends who were with him told police that he had attempted to cross the trussel and was about halfway across when a freight train approached. 
Police said that Jewel had moved to the side and attempted to hold on to the railroad tie, but the train's vibrations eventually shook him off. Maybe just don't cross the trestle. Yeah. Um, so something, because I live not too far from the train tracks, and something people might not know. Also, I'm surprised they can't tell the trains are coming. They obviously can't, but you know where my house is and where the train mm-hmm. tracks are. Yeah. And I can feel my floor shaking when a train goes by. So for me, it's a little bit surprising that they wouldn't have felt the ground. Um, yeah. At some point. Uh, but also, well, like, trains are long, and it takes minutes to uh, cross the tracks and yeah it, like you can't just hang on especially with that kind of vibration and you're trying to hold on literally for your life for like i'm gonna guess like seven to nine minutes easily easily yeah. especially if it's an a bridge made from the 1800s still actively yeah. being used oh yeah yeah like, um not yeah. only that but like keep in mind trains are like literal cities Oh, yeah. Like, they're literal moving cities, and I don't think people realize that. Yeah. So. And they're also not fast. People don't realize they're not fast. But they're also faster than you expect. Yeah, well, they go, like, through, when they go through towns, they only go 30 miles an hour. And then even when they open up, they're only going, like, 50, 55 miles an hour. Yeah. Except for the ones that are meant to, like, go zoom, zoom, and go real quick. But well, if, but, if but you're just going are, to the city or whatever, those are typically fast. Those are also typically the zoom zoom ones are also typically not uh, freight trains. Yeah, because a freight train doesn't necessarily need to zoom zoom. A freight train can just go. Yeah, it just needs to get from point A to point B. Yeah, I watched so many videos. I can't. I'll have to try to find this guy's YouTube channel, but he does freight hopping. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like for, and it's so interesting to watch. It's also super dangerous. Oh yeah, there's literally like something that's like the suicide well or something like that because they're just. You have to look at specific cars, yeah, and know which one. Where if you hop over the edge, if there's going to be floor or if it's just going to be open right into the wheels. Yeah. Now, y- as a rule, don't yeah. train hop. Yeah. Like. Oh yeah. So the video is Dave's big fat freight hop, and there's so many parts, and they're all so good. And him like there's terminology, and he's got this whole get up, and he like runs from they're called like bears i guess like security because i guess they know people do that and they look for them so oh i watched so many um it's so like they're so interesting i've got i've got stuff i'm gonna share with you God that you have it. to watch later that one you're gonna watch second because it's very long and then you're gonna get addicted to it and watch literally all of them and that just there goes your day the one that i just sent you is hilarious and you should watch it later uh so at seven thirty. Uh, Saturday, April 23rd in 2016, the Louisville Metro Police Department's 8th Division responded to a report of a pedestrian stuck, uh, struck in the 3100 block of South Poplick Road off Taylorsville Road, just outside of the Gene Snyder Interstate 265. Um, Raquel Bain, 26, of Dayton, Ohio, died of multiple bl- blunt force injuries. Uh, suffered inclusion and subsequent fall from the trestle. Mm-hmm. She and her boyfriend were out looking for the Pope Lick monster. Uh, her boyfriend was able to wrap himself around uh, and support uh, some of the supports, and only his shoulder was struck by the train. Still. Uh, he was also like a bot. Like, he was like, that's why he uh, survived, is because he was like, I think, like a rock climber. He did some kind of athletic stuff, I forget. Where, like, he, but and he, just his shoulder was struck. I gotta um, say. 26 yeah. is kind of old to be killed by this. Yeah. Um, and that was the most recent incident on the bridge. Uh, uh, there was also a short film made in 1988 called The Legend of the Pope Lick Monster. It's a 16-minute film that cost $6,000 uh, to make really, and premiere co- on December guess... 29, 1988 uh, at the Uptown Theater. Uh, most sorry. of the film was shot at the Pope Lick Trestle. What's up? I'm sorry for cutting off, but... Yeah. I've seen that film. Yeah, was it good? S- no. $6,000 is v- a lot of money for what they did. I mean, I assume that it, it was all in the film costs. Yeah. Like, it probably was literally all in the cost of the film that they, they shot mm. with. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so, most of the film was shot at the trestle, but scenes showing the characters up on the trestle were shot at another safer location. The uh, Norfolk Southern Railway officials were very upset about the film 
as they thought it would encourage teenagers to visit the trestle. Kind of does. And they, f- and they found one scene in particular dangerously misleading. In the scene, the main character is a high school student who narrowly escapes uh, an approaching train by hanging off the side of the trestle. In reality, few people would have the strength to hang on for... Oh, okay, I did put it in here. The five to seven minutes it would take for a longer train to clear the 772-foot or 235-meter trestle. Uh, in addition to the vibrations from the train... Uh, are also so strong that the ground beneath the trestle shakes as the train passes. Good lord. Yeah. I... I don't know how you got a full episode out of the Pokelip Monster, but you did. Yeah, right? It, it's such impressive. a... It's such a non... Like, it's got the story, but it's such a non-entity of a monster, really. Oh, yeah. Like... It literally is just, it's a man with a goat face who's kind of spooky. Yeah. Um, it's also, like, super fake, right? It's a teen, yeah. it's a teen urban legend. Mm-hmm. For sure. Oh, de- for 100%. Yeah, like. Like, yeah. Yeah. There's, there's literally... There's literally no way that this isn't just a teen story. Yeah. Like, it's... Uh, yeah. It's 100% a thing where you, like, dare each other go across the bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Like... I just... I'm so flabbergasted by it. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah? It, it, it's just... Th- these things... These stories... Like, and the worst part is the Pokemon Monster is one of those things that I've known about for years yeah. and I don't know why I actually know about it to be totally honest because it's like I, I think it's literally just because of the the video the movie there's see I never saw the movie I know about it because of the uh, last podcast on the left live show they mm-hmm. had like a 10 minute thing on the Pope like monster and I was like that sounds cool yeah yeah that makes sense yeah. but like <laughs> I don't know I don't know, man. Oh, man, I'm still so jet lagged. <laughs> Are you? I believe it. Um. So, I don't have anything else to say about this weird, weird non-entity of a monster. Do you? I do not. All right. In that case, in the most succinct and clean way of transitioning into a end of credits plug yeah. thing... Uh, if you want to get in contact with us or know more about the show, you can visit our website, cryptopediacast.com, our Instagram at cryptopediacast, Twitter is also at cryptopediacast. Um, if you want to get in t- touch with us directly, you can email us, cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. Uh, we have a Patreon, which should be linked in this the episode notes. Um, we've got a few people to thank in there because they donate enough money for us to thank them once a month. Uh, <laughs> listen, you're, you're this so is, good at this. This you're is so good at this. I've done this how many times? This is our 51st. You've done this 50 49th, times. 49th. This is the 49th time I've done this. Yeah. Um, and I've not gotten any better at it. So, uh, but thank you to our Jackalopes, who I just verified. Uh, yeah. Clay Sinclair and Marty Von Party. Thank you very Woo. much, guys. Um, we have a Facebook group, Facebook page, all that stuff. I kind of stopped posting stuff to there. I post stuff to the Twitter more, just as a heads up. Mm-hmm. Um, if you enjoyed the show, rate, review, subscribe. I think we're up to eight ratings on iTunes now, which is pretty cool. Um, if you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send them in. Um, especially if you have, especially if you have sources. Oh yes. It's all about them sources, baby. Yeah. Uh, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is Brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto Brandon, capital C, capital B. If you want to get in contact with me uh, on Instagram, I'm Mew2057. On Twitter, I'm JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com, and my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. 
Our art was done by Tom Hill. You can find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatercloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. And I just saw Tom on uh, Thursday. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. We were uh, meeting some friends out and, and I was just walking past. I was like, hey, that guy looks an awful lot like Tom. And I got closer. I was like, Tom Hill. So that was fun. Got to see him for a minute. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Um, before we go, damn, that's a lot of sources. Yeah. Well, it took that much to try to get an episode, an episode. That's fair. Yeah. Um, as always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. I have two things for you before I go. Yes. Um, they're both links. Uh oh. And I'm sending to you them on. I'm sending you them on Skype. Control V. Enter. This is how I know the world is ending. Wait, what is this? Uh, it's a Bishojo Michael Myers, and oh, a God. Bishojo Ash from Evil Dead. Why though? Because the world is ending. That's everything is terrible all the time. Yeah, those are bad, right? Yeah. The uh, so real quick, I'm not gonna make you watch the train thing, but I think you might actually like it or find it interesting. But that's right. another one where it's just like if you're on the couch or whatever. But you should watch the uh, the driving school thing. Yeah, I'm gonna stop recording because I see the title. Oh. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll stop too. <laughs>